Hello, everyone. <laughs> I am here with a new section of our Miracles Do Happen book. It is from Guidepost, of course. Move you guys up some here. This section is called Miracles of Timing. It's like if I had not been running late, if it had happened five minutes later, he happened to pass by. It was perfect timing. God works in every element of timing and space to display his wonders. With split-second split accuracy, he steps in to bless his bewildered humans. The God who stilled the sun so the Israelites could see to vanquish their enemies can still manipulate the natural workings of the minutes and hours and all who live within those perimeters. Surely it's just coincidence, some people say, but coincidence just might be God's middle name. And I can tell you some stories about coincidences too. Not always coincidences, I don't believe. Trying to load The Sims 3, Layla, if you're watching this. My niece uh, was going to throw it out and she gave it to me. I didn't know it. I'm surprised with it. Mom brought it to me today. It's um, Sims 3 Starter Pack. It comes with uh, Sims 3. Uh, hang on. Sims 3. The Sims 3 Late Night and Sims 3 High End. That's what it looks like. So that's what I'm trying to load. I hope it works. If it does, I'm going to play it tonight. You know, I, I have to get used to The Sims 3 because, you know, I'm used to playing Sims 2. If not, I'm going to play The Sims 2 tonight. Yes, I am, mister. So let's read um, some of these miracles of timing. See if we think it was just a coincidence or a miracle ourselves. How about that? The first one we're going to read is called The Tractor That Never Moved. Have you ever got behind a tractor in traffic? Yes. Some, some people are really nice and they'll pull over. Other ones just keep on going and going and going. If you live in the country... It happens all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it did where we live. And this one is by Billy Joe Langston. The bright sunshine felt toasty on my arms as I drove through the countryside on that first day of summer in southeastern Virginia. However, the long ride on winding rural roads sandwiched between acres of farmland made my destination seem endless. My vision stretched to faraway fields where huge tractors moved steadily across the landscape, towering over newly sown fields. Yet these familiar scenes of farm life did not resonate with me on this summer morning in quite the same way they always had. My thoughts were centered on my dad, who would never drive a tractor again. As a lifelong farmer and farm manager, dad knew how to make a field of crops look pretty. He had known as one of the, he was known as one of the last gentleman farmers of his generation. Although he managed farms, his real joy was being in the fields tending to the crops. I often jokingly compared him to Thomas Jefferson, who unapologetically wrote about the joy of farming at his Monticello estate. Dad thought I was trying to make him feel ancient, but he agreed with President Jefferson's experience that farm skills could develop effective leadership abilities. Often Dad would also candidly express the significance of his vocation to the country's stability. Without any warning, his general conversation would move into a lecture about agriculture, livestock, fertilizer, acid rain effects, global warming, farm trade agreements with foreign countries, and a host of other variables related to the way that producing crops and food could benefit the nation's growth and economy. 
During my childhood, Dad explained to me the variety of equipment and skills needed to operate a successful farm business. Driving and maneuvering a tractor were at the top of the list. Dad was known as a green man farmer. According to hometown farm legend, that means he drove green tractors exclusively. Tractors of all sizes would come and go in our fields throughout many years of farming, and all of them were green. He probably had John Deere's then. Whenever someone was trying to find Dad, the best place to look was in a green tractor seat. But on the summer day, the lessons I'd learned about farming surfaced and practically overwhelmed my conscience. I wasn't sure if it would be the day of summer solstice or the next day or the one after that when God would take that away from all that was familiar to him. All the things I witnessed as my car swerved around curves on that backcountry road. My only comfort was, rec was realizing that dad's pain and suffering caused from years of exposure to cold winter days and blistering rays of the hot southern summer sun would soon be over. Sounds like he's passing away. It took 90 minutes to reach the hospital and I made it just in time. Dad looked peaceful with no apparent discomfort when he left for heaven. It was the worst feeling of loss I'd ever known. The first hours of transition from my family were difficult. I kept thinking of all those memories I just left behind on the country roads, thinking of what dad would say. I heard him whisper, baby girl, you've got to be brave, courageous, and strong for mom and your sister, Dean. You're my tomboy girl. You can do it. I'm counting on you. I focused on tributes I could make to honor his memory. We planned a week of commemorations, but it was clear what the appropriate symbol would be to represent dad. I'd say a green tractor. The decision to place a toy tractor at his tombstone was logical. It would be a farewell gift of a life well lived. After the formal arrangements were finalized, I slipped away from family gatherings to find the perfect toy tractor for dad's resting place. Everything about the tractor had to be consistent with the types of tractors he drove. I knew instinctively that the tractor had to be green, get a, get a John Deere, with big tires and inexpensive, well, after all, I wasn't going to spend more than $25 on a toy tractor. That would blow away. That would blow away hours after the burial. Just something cute and nice, I thought, to be in place for a few days while family mem members were still in town. What about that, then? Those are usually pretty expensive. Many days have passed with rain, gusty winds, hell, and horrific storms since I watched Dad's casket lowered into the ground. Back in 2003, Hurricane Isabel was one of our worst storms. The hurricane hit as a classic Cape Verde storm, recorded as the most costly disaster in the history of coastal Virginia. Everyone was told to go home and hunker down until the storm passed. I remember how the winds waited for nighttime to ferociously howl and whip around every corner of our house and barns. By then, I knew the toy tractor would not make it to daylight, but I was wrong. The revelation of the tractor's miraculous power began to emerge. After four years, our family was amazed that the tractor still sat untouched and victorious over a ferocious hurricane. Fifteen, fifteen additional years have come and gone since Dad passed on. The toy tractor given as a farewell gift has withstood torrential rain, fierce winds, and the strength of a hurricane. Yet the tractor at the tombstone stands untouched by human hands or weather-related catastrophe 
and remains perched and stable over my dad's coffin-covered chest. No one can understand why day after day, through rain and storms and other acts of God and nature, the toy tractor doesn't budge. It is never tossed or driven. Like faith and trust in God, it is steadfast and immovable. It sits with frayed front wheels turned inward, touching the front of the tombstone as it was originally placed. Friends, relatives, and church members often comment on seeing the worn toy tractor. And church members often comment on seeing the warm toy tractor when we make the pilgrimage to the community cemetery. During a visit to her family plot a few years ago, Mrs. Bina, a close friend, shouted to me through cupped hands, Is your dad's tractor still there? You bet, Mrs. Bina. It's still holding firm, I replied. She shook her head in disbelief, and she said, This is an amazing, mysterious miracle. The farewell gift for your dad turned out to be a miracle for you. This is just no other explanation for it. On that day and every day since, I knew she was the messenger sent to confirm what I've always known. Although the tractor is battered and mostly rusted now, its resilience is clinging to dad's tombstone, reflects the biblical principles my Sunday school teacher taught me long ago about the loving favor of God and the eternal love between a parent and child. Receiving God's loving kindness in the special way is a priceless treasure. 1 Timothy 3.16 Great is the mystery of godliness. Amen. So you guys, do you think this story is just coincidence or do you think it is a true miracle? Do you think God performed this miracle or do you think it's just a coincidence? Do you think that tractor was just sitting there coincidentally through a big hurricane, rains, winds for fifth, over 15 years? Just a cheap tractor under $25, just a toy toy tractor or do you think God kept it there what do you think sure I think God kept it there and what do you guys think put it in the comments below I think God kept it there too I think the story's more than coincidence